up top on the side of the door here you have a little switch that is a porch light if you will it's included on the outside of the trailer um, it's a little night light bulb so it's not very bright but i guess it's better than nothing all right now we're inside the trailer uh, you can see the interior is in really good shape my family's taken awesome care of this thing over the years um the only thing that's really not original is the upholstery which is to be expected i mean the trailer's 60 years old you're going to need to replace the you know the window coverings and and you know couch cushions over over time and uh, my mom's actually done all that work herself which is kind of cool she's repulsed this couch i think at least twice and has redone all the uh the window drapery uh at least two or three times over the years so um outside of the upholstery and then the carpet uh it's pretty much all original in here for the most part uh, i believe originally there was some tile on the floor and then we had some kind of old rust colored carpet up until a few years ago they replaced it for this lighter colored carpet and then of course the refrigerator is not new or is not original that was replaced about 10 15 years ago because the original went out and we didn't have an option to repair it um, but i think what i'll do is i'll start in the back and then we'll work our way to the front So coming back to the bathroom, it's um, it's pretty cramped, but there's a lot going on in here. You see we have a combination toilet and shower set up. Uh, we don't ever use the shower back here because it's not the most waterproof and uh, they, don't, they don't really control the flow of the water very well. I think on some of the later Airstreams, uh, ones I, I've, I've stayed in ones from like the 60s and 70s, they have a whole molded tub for the shower that kind of contains the water. So... Um, a nice thought, but uh, yeah, not something we still use. But yeah, you have your shower head up here, hooks for a shower curtain along the side, and then there's a rail that comes across to close a shower curtain with your controls down on the side there. Pretty standard chemical toilet. Uh, that was replaced, I think, in the 90s. Um, you got two pedals here, with the small one on the right to fill the bowl with water, and then the big one to flush it. Probably not the safest thing, but they do have an electrical outlet for your convenience in the shower. Um, what kind of blows my mind is it's inside the shower curtain and right next to the shower head. Uh, they did things differently back then, but hey, they survived, so I guess it worked for them. Up here we have some storage. Mirrors that slide back. On both sides. Pretty standard sink. Um, I forget what this material is. It's uh, formica or uh, God, I can't remember the name of it. But yeah, you see this this pattern of pretty much every uh, bathroom kitchen countertop from the 50s and 60s. So kind of funny to see it continued in here. Underneath the sink, we have this drawer that drops down. You've got uh, some towels, things in there. Uh, access to your various plumbing. And then two more drawers store whatever you need got a built-in uh i think this is a cup holder and toothbrush holder which is kind of cool that's original as well as the paper towel rack and then finishing out the bathroom we have a pretty tall closet with a full-length mirror co-hook there for your convenience turn on this light shelf up top and coat rack here or a clothes rack you can put hangers on and coming down here i believe is a circuit breaker box which i didn't think they had back then i thought there was a fuse box in here somewhere um i'm not too sure without taking the cover off of that but uh and then you see you've got uh some utilities uh water lines and things running through here that you can gain access to Coming forward into the bedrooms, you'll notice that there are sliding partitions. There's one here going back to the bathroom, and then there's one going up to the front area as well. These have a magnetic latch on them. Keep them in place. Give you some privacy. Not a whole lot, but better than nothing again. I believe these are actually original to the trailer. 
And then there were straps to hold them in place. I think this one's long gone. That one's on its last legs, um, just to keep it folded up while you're traveling. Um, you'll notice there's these cool light covers or light assemblies throughout the trailer. Uh, these ones back here have a nice little shelf on top for various things. And you'll notice that a lot of the lights in this trailer have two knobs or two pull strings on them. You have one that's a gold color and then one that's red. Basically, the gold one runs off of the 110 outlet when you're plugged into the city power. And then the red ones run off the 12 volt battery. So if you're on the side of the road or you got a rest stop, you want some light, assuming the battery's connected, you pull this one on the right. Not quite as bright as the 110 outlets or the 110 lights, uh, but still nice to have that as an option. Above the beds, some pretty nice storage here. You can see we got some old board games from the 70s, I think, stashed up there. So probably been on the trailer for God knows how long. Pretty good storage space up here on both sides. Up top, this is an exhaust fan to help air out the back of the trailer. Um, there is a metal cover that goes over this. My parents have taken off all the covers on the roof to winterize it for the time being. Um, they're having some sealing issues as far as keeping out water, things like that. So we just left them off for the time being. But yeah, you just flip that switch and the exhaust fan would turn on. And then there's a nice screen that goes over it too so that you know don't get any bugs or anything like that in there. Underneath the bed, at least on this side, you have three pretty good sized drawers. You can put all kinds of things like towels, um, bedding, things like that in there. And then on this side, you don't have any drawers, but that's because your hot water heater is underneath the bed. And you can actually access that underneath here. Might be able to see those two holes. You pull this panel up and you can get access to the top of the hot water heater. We have some magazine racks on the wall here and towel racks or, you know, hang towels, clothes, whatever you want from there. A uh, small microwave that we keep that we use on top of the refrigerator there. And that is pretty much it for this bedroom area. Uh, I think these beds are, I want to say they're full size, don't quote me on that. Uh, but they're pretty small. I'm about six foot and I don't really fit on them anymore. Um, so if you have two smaller people back here, it works pretty well. And uh, pretty nice and cozy back here. And of course you got a window on either side. With cranks that open, I'll show you those on the front windows here in a minute. All right, we're coming to the kitchen now. Um, here is the AC unit that I was telling you about. Uh, this would have been just a normal opening, um, like this one here. We have plastic covers that go over those, kind of a white translucent plastic. Uh, acts as like a skylight, uh, kind of lets in some natural light, which is nice, and then. There are cylinders that you turn on either side to open it and you can get some fresh air in. So this AC was put in uh, for obviously, you know, comfort, convenience, kind of needed it going down to the Southwest, warmer places like that. Uh, you got AC and heat in there. The heat doesn't work the greatest. We end up just using a space heater whenever needed, but this trailer doesn't really see a lot of use past uh, late summer. Above the sink here, I have more storage. Either side, ancient can opener there. Got an additional light underneath the cabinet with paper towel holder and then a rack for spices or you know whatever you want to store up there. We got salt and pepper, barbecue lighter matches, things like that. And then you have two sinks to use here. Um, yeah, I think these both go straight to gray water. Um, there's no garbage disposal, obviously, or anything like that. So there are strainers in the sinks to keep large chunks from going down and blocking anything up. You got hot and cold. Uh, this was a drinking water dispenser at one point. There would be a separate filter just for that line alone, so you could dispense just dedicated straight to drinking water. That's been disconnected. I'd like to get that rehooked up at some point again in the future, but uh, that's a project for another day. Underneath the sink here, 
You got two drawers. There's one for your cutlery with uh, dividers included. It's kind of nice. And then uh, this is, just looks like kind of a junk drawer for the most part. It's funny, this is actually an adapter for the TV antenna that I was showing you earlier. Um, we'll come back to that in a second. And then turn this knob. We got access underneath the sink. You can access to all the plumbing and then more storage down here. And then one of the neater parts, I think, of this trailer are the stovetop and oven. Um, let's see, down here, there's a little bit of storage for like a frying pan or something like that. Not much. And then oven itself, you got one rack to work with in there. I can't, we haven't used this thing in a long time, so I don't know if this is like a separate zone down here or if it's all just one temperature. Um... But yeah, kind of a kind of a neat setup. And then, oh yeah, you, okay. So that that vent f or earlier that I've shown you outside, that's for the oven here. And then that one on the roof is going to be for the uh, for the heater that I'll show you in a second. But yeah, you can see that pipes directly to the side of the trailer. So you can see this is the original Princess oven and cooktop. To get access to the cooktop, we're going to take this section of the countertop, pop it forward, slide it forward. Just fighting me a little bit. And then fold it over like that. So not only do you now have access to your cooking surface, but you also have a little extra countertop to work with here. If you want to, you know, like a little cutting surface or a food prep area. So they include these heat shields in here. You can use those as you see fit. You don't want to burn down your curtains or anything like that. <laughs> Pretty close proximity to those burners. And then they also include another one here. Try to do this one-handed. That unfolds. And you can kind of use this however you want to wrap around the back side here, or you, know, you want to put it over here by the sink. Just an extra layer of protection while you're cooking on the, the open flame. I'll show you one of these windows. Um, we have them blacked out right now. They put some plastic up here just to kind of protect the upholstery. Um, but on all these windows, we have these hand cranks here. And then there are also retaining levers down below. So you would pull the levers on both sides, and swing these out. And then you have to turn these hand cranks at the same time, one with each hand. And basically one crank operates each side of the window. So you have to kind of do them in unison or else you can put stress on the window and that pops off the tracks or all kinds of crazy stuff ensues. But so they're a little finicky, but kind of a nice setup. Pull that drape closed again. Underneath the window here, we have basic 110 outlet. And then this is the control panel for the uh, heater which is right to the side here. We have access panel down here. You can access to all the in uh, internals to light it, check the pilot light, things like that. That ran off of uh, propane at one point. And then your switch here to control the blower for it, run it either off of the city power or off of the battery itself. But like I said, this has been uh, disconnected. We don't even use that anymore. Uh, one of the coolest things in this trailer, I think, is this table and from my understanding this is not here with the trailer originally i don't know what kind of table it had um but from what i've been told my grandfather built this from scratch and it's kind of a cool setup so there is a latch on the left side here i'll push this in a little bit this table swings up and then there is another latch on this leg and voila you have yourself a nice little dining nook here and to make it even better there's a third latch release that table opens and separates and then we have leaves that go inside to expand it actually will come out pretty good way and i think you can fit about four or five people around the table kind of cramped um but better than just one or two like you normally would so very cool to see that i couldn't believe for the longest time that someone made this. 
because it's so intricate. But from what I've been told, this is all handmade by my grandfather. So very cool to see that still standing up and uh, standing the test of time. Coming around the front of the trailer, we have light uh, reading lights on either side of the couch. You can see I have the bottom ones on. Those are the city power. And then up top here, you might be able to see that there's a little red paint marking on the end of the, the knob there. Those are your battery powered lights. So battery is still hooked up. Get some uh, reading light off of the battery. Kind of a nice, uh, nice feature that they added in. And then nice shelf over the front window with a coat hook. Store all kinds of stuff up there. Pretty good sized picture window out the front. Give you a little something to look at rather than black plastic. Um, let's in a lot of light up front there in addition with the skylight. And then to the right, I'm not sure what this crank is. I want to say this is an adjustment for the TV antenna at one point. Uh, in fact, yeah, I think this this rotates the tube outside that I was showing you earlier for the antenna. So as you turn this, the tube will rotate and you can adjust the picture. And then one more outlet here. And then this switch here activates the uh, electric pump for the freshwater tank. So if you are at a rest stop or somewhere where you're not hooked up to a water source and you have the freshwater tank filled up with water, you hit this, I believe. Yeah, that runs off of the uh, the battery, so you can use that to supply water pressure to the trailer if needed in an emergency situation. Now the front couch does convert into a bed. It's not the biggest bed, it's not the most comfortable bed, but it is bigger than the ones in the back. Um, and I will show you how to do that now. So you pull off your armrests here on either side. You set those aside out of the way. Pull up the bottom part here. Stick it on me a little bit. Yeah, so that doesn't want to come. It looks like it's starting to show its age and kind of come apart a little bit, but basically what would happen is you pull that whole bar out and then the couch back comes up and you would swing this around it would sit on this ledge and there is your bed and you can roll up all your sheets and bedding and uh, keep those all stashed behind the the uh, couch back up in the front there and then put down whatever bedding if it cheat or anything like that you needed you see those two hooks there on the back of the seat back. You attach those to these loops. Put your armrest back. Underneath the couch, we have three drawers. You can stash all kinds of stuff in here. You see we have more bedding there. And even more bedding, so. Nice storage underneath there. Just make sure whatever you need out of there, you get it before you make the bed because once the bed's in place, you're not getting access to those drawers again. And then, I've always liked this area. You have two windows here. Let in some natural light. And then each one of these has its own individual crank, so you can open these up. Um, yeah, I like those windows. You just have to be careful, especially with that top one when it's open. When you go out the door, that's pretty much at eye level, so make sure you don't poke your eye or slam your face into the window when you're going in and out of the trailer. And then this is the back side of the door. You can see we have our screen, our latches for the outer door skin. To lock the door, you just turn the handle one click to the left and then back to uh, unlock it for the night. Uh, this cool metal work here over the screen. And then yet another magazine rack on the side of the refrigerator here and put all kinds of stuff in. Now coming up to the top of the refrigerator, 
We have a storage rack here. We'll keep all kinds of stuff for, you know, hooking up the trailer, anything you need, like a uh, pin for the uh, the receiver, uh, the hitch receiver, things like that. Uh, keep them handy on this tray up here. Another outlet up top, we use that for the microwave. Pretty short towel rack. I'm not really sure what you're supposed to fit there, but it's there if you need it. And then this is the um, outlet for the TV antenna. Um, I think in addition to that plug I showed you in the front corner, there was one on the outside here as well. You could run the cable over the door to the other side of the wall here. Then you've got your adapter cable that I showed you earlier. You just plug it into that two prong thing and then uh, screw that into your terminals on your TV. But I think that's the old rabbit ear style. Nobody's using that anymore. So kind of a neat thought for back in the day. Uh, the original fire extinguisher that came with the trailer, we should probably replace that because I doubt that's going to do us a lot of good if we ever needed it. We do keep one uh, additional newer one just to be on the safe side, but kind of cool to keep that just for the old aesthetic. And then refrigerator was replaced, like I said, I think about 15 years ago. The original one had a big white, I want to say it was a ceramic door. Um, it was pretty similar to the oven, uh, that kind of finish. Uh, painted white, big old handle on it, kind of, you know, space age looking. Um, so I do really miss the way that refrigerator looked, but this one's a lot more efficient, a lot more user friendly. You have adjustable shelves on the side door here. Um, adjustable racks, little uh, fruit vegetable bin, and then uh, freezer that you can make use of up top there. And then not much in the way of uh, controls. Pretty much just an on off switch and then switch to run it just on gas. Or you can set it for an automatic mode, which is kind of nice when the battery's hooked up. If it detects that uh, you're not hooked up to city power anymore, it will automatically switch over to the gas tanks and use that to cool the refrigerator. And I guess coming to one of the last things on the inside of the trailer here is a nice little storage door, our storage closet here. Um, we have a hook on the inside here for your vacuum cleaner. I want to say that's the original one that we bought for the trailer, which is pretty cool to see that. But yeah, there's a hook to keep that in place while you're traveling. We've got our leaves for the table to extend that out. Two additional chairs. And there's a belt here to secure them all in place during travel. That might have broken a long time ago. Uh, mini coat rack up top here. And a couple hooks for random things. You see we've got a fly swatter and a little broom there. And then a small storage area, a little cubby up top there. Uh, one thing I always thought was really cool, this is the original paperwork that came with the trailer. So there you can see we have a warranty guarantee. Trade wind land yacht, that's the model and the trim level of the trailer. Really cool to see that, that's all original. And this is, I want to say this is burner adjustment for the... What is this for? I want to say this is for the water heater, but I could be wrong. But yeah, basically, oh, for the refrigerator. This is for the original refrigerator, so that was how to adjust the uh, the burner for that. And then, of course, one more partition here. See the snap still hanging on. If you're sleeping in there, you still got people hanging out in the front part, or if you're sleeping on the front part of the trailer, you want some privacy, pull that across. Well, you get the idea. So there you have it, guys. Uh, that's pretty much the entire trailer in a nutshell, inside and out. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching this as much as I enjoyed making it. Like I said, this trailer's been in the family for a while. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, a lot of memories, a lot of experiences with it, so it's kind of cool to pass that along. And it's in such good condition, it's kind of neat to show how things were done back in the day. And, uh, you know, kind of enjoy stuff like this while, while you still have it around. Um, you know, share it with future generations, people and I might not be able to see things like this. So um, 
I think I've covered pretty much everything in the trailer. Uh, if you guys have any questions, you want to see anything else in detail, please let me know in the comments. I will do my best to get back and cover those things at, at a later time. And then I will do my best to answer any questions in the comments as well. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. And until next time, guys, take care.